How's it going everybody? Welcome back into the shop. So if you are new to the channel and just tuning in, I want to kind of explain how this channel works. I have two style of videos. If you see an AR followed by a number on a title or on a thumbnail, that's kind of my vlog or behind the scene uh, footage of what I'm doing in the shop. I run a full-time business here building custom pieces for clients. And so those videos kind of uh, follow that, that process. So there's a lot of talking, there's music. Uh, in this episode, we're actually working on my Oliver 91D Mortiser, which uh, I am completely restoring. It was built sometime in the 50s. I don't have an exact date on it, uh, but it's an old Mortiser, and I cannot wait to get it restored and back up and running. Uh, if you see a video without the AR or the number, that's usually going to be just a silent video of me working, carving something like the airplane I recently did uh, for my son. So... Those are my two style videos, so I just wanted to clarify that so you guys understood how the channel worked. Um, I'm excited to get going on this Oliver Mortiser. We're doing a lot of work on it. Most of what I'm doing now is the not so fun part of any restoration. I'm working on uh, sandblasting the parts, cleaning off the paint, rust, uh, making sure everything is there, checking all the bearings, which um, for the most part look pretty good. There's only one part on this machine I've found that's broken and I think it's going to be easy to replace. So. I'm pumped to have uh, this machine going going through a full restoration without a lot of problems. It should be pretty easy. Uh, let's get started on this video. like having a bunch of sand smacking you in the face. Safety first is what they say. There's absolutely nothing fun about this. Actually, it's pretty miserable. Okay, so let's get caught up here on the mortiser. I've got all these parts here cleaned up, these parts here. This area here is what I want to work on. I'd like to get all of this sandblasted this afternoon and get that done because I will tell you right now, sandblasting is not fun. I thought it was really cool for like the first five or ten minutes uh, and then I hated it. Literally hated it. The flip side is it's way faster and easier than using chemicals. So. Just gonna suck it up and deal with it. The motor, obviously, I don't really want to sandblast it. That would be a poor decision. I've got some disassembly to do on that guy. Stupid. Couldn't see it, but it's in there. Hey, 
Okay, someone put paint on the rod here, which is making it very difficult to get off. As you can see, there's paint here, and the paint is just getting sheared off as we go through that opening. Paint's making it incredibly difficult. I'm going to go ahead and get on the, just start soaking the smaller pieces in the vinegar solution. Uh, pieces like, you know, this shaft, this little dude, even the bolts. Um, that way that vinegar is really good at taking off surface rust and even getting the grease off. So I'm going to go ahead and drop some parts in the bucket, get them soaking, and just keep rolling on this thing. All right, so that's pretty, pretty nice and cleaned up. This process is not a lot of fun. Uh, cleaning these things is the worst part, but it's important to get them clean. You can see this one, this is a little handle. It's just the rest is flaking off. I can scrape it off my finger. That's how well this vinegar works to get that rust off. Okay, so I have all the parts pretty much cleaned up uh, as far as just getting paint and rust off. I have the body to do and a few few other parts in here. I'm gonna take what I have on the floor because I feel like it's getting a little unorganized and I'm going to move it uh, to this side of the shop, wire brush it, get it totally clean and ready for either paint or wax or oil, whatever I'm gonna put on the parts that aren't painted and then keep them organized over here uh, in a way that I know where they go. Um, that way I don't feel like I have everything just scattered on the floor over here. Handles all nice and polished. This inside will get painted. The outside stays nice and shiny. Okay, so you can see uh, the difference here. The stuff on the right I have polished up, cleaned up. Um, everything over here still needs to be uh, worked on. The bolts need to be cleaned. All this needs to be polished. You can see the difference between the two. But that's kind of how I do it. It's a slow process. I, I don't do it all at once. Kind of, when I have some downtime, I got things in the clamps right now. Uh, I'll come over here and do some work on it. So I'll just leave this here. And once I get this whole cart done, I'll take all these parts and probably stack them under the table down there uh, in a way that I know what they are and where they go. And then I'll just keep the process going over the next week. <laughs> inside of a motor okay this is all way above my pay grade I think I'm just gonna check the bearing here there's a bearing in here I don't really know how I'm gonna get to it
So like I said, this is all so far outside of what I know what I'm doing. I know how to clean parts up and put them back together. When it comes to motors and all these bearings, uh, it's over my head a little. I can tell there's some damage, whatever this is, there's some damage to it, either by something getting in there, a piece of metal or something, or by somebody in the past having worked on this and done something to it. The bearing to me seems like it needs to go. I don't know. Got a little wobble this way. Um. Okay, so it's actually a few days uh, past when I disassembled this motor. Um, and I've been messing around with it a little bit more. I, I still haven't really decided what I'm going to do with it. I did find out that this little uh, insert, I don't really call it a collet or whatever, slides into the shaft right here and there's a set screw that holds it in place and this is actually what holds the drill bit to the mortiser and then your chisel slides in right over well gotta go the other way chisel goes over that and then goes into this this is actually the wrong size for this uh, bit I don't even know how they were using this but it's not sized correctly I can replace this. I found this part. Uh, you know, Eagle Machinery sells these parts, uh, and they sell them to fit different size bits. This is probably for three eighths to three quarter. I don't know, a little bit bigger bit, not for the smaller quarter inch uh, bit. It's actually got. Um, it's been pretty banged up anyway. It needs to be replaced. The thread. Someone hammered on it, and the thread is all messed up. I can't even get this nut off of here. Uh, it's it's just the threads all jacked up. And you can tell someone's put some pliers on this and really uh, scarred it up pretty good trying to get it off. So I'll replace this. Uh, outside of that, I really don't know what the best thing to do with this motor is. I am actually going to contact Eagle Machinery and ask them. Um, let me see if I can get you in closer. No, I don't know what this little ring is here with these little clips uh it, it looks like it's a little banged up at some point someone took this apart and uh appears that they did some damage to it so i feel like it probably needs to be uh worked on and i don't have the tools or the know-how to work on the motor it's the original motor to the machine obviously and you're obviously not going to find a motor like this anywhere else it's specifically made for this machine so the motor has to be fixed and has to be used. I can't really replace it. So probably what I'll end up doing is maybe shipping it into Eagle Machinery or find someone locally who can uh, rebuild, you know, pull this off, maybe replace this, put new bearings, and even possibly rewind the, the inside of the motor. I don't know anything about it. it. It looks to be good. The wires coming out are not in good shape at all. They're actually in really bad shape. So those really probably need to be replaced. I'm also kind of interested to know what these little engraved numbers are on the motor. Uh, if that was something that was done by Oliver when they made the motor, or if that's something that someone did, you know, in the process of repairing it at some point. So I don't know a lot about that. I wonder if anybody knew uh, why that would have that engraving uh, on there. I don't really know yet. I'd love to hear your input. If anyone knows anything about motors, about these motors, uh, specifically for the Oliver 91D. I'd love to hear in the comments or an email of, of what you think I should do. Um, I really feel at this point I'll probably send it in and get it fixed. Likely the light of mine will burn out The mountains where I spend my rambling years I paid my sins from the poor traveling days Oh Lord, please can't you hear my prayers? So I rode my body up the mountain, up the mountain to a place where I can sit my rocking chair. I rode my body up the mountain, up the mountain, and I'm never going back again. I swear. Most likely the son of mine will be found in the mountains where I'm born and raised. I paid my dues. All right, so I'm shutting it down. That's been a long, long day. It's about nine o'clock. Uh, I got, I still got quite a bit of work to do on this thing. I'm not gonna lie. It's as expected, not fun at all. Uh, 
But I would say I'm about 85% of the way done. I'm going to sandblast a lot of the parts that I can't grind. And I'll probably start working on that tomorrow. Nah, probably won't. I don't know when I'll work on it. For tonight, I'm going to drink my cold beer and go take a shower. Okay, so that pretty much does it for this video. All the parts are laid out here, other than the big ones that are over on the other side of the shop. Everything is polished up, cleaned up. It looks great. I cannot wait to start painting uh, on this machine. The next step, obviously, is to tape off uh, parts. Spray primer and then spray paint. I haven't decided what color I'm going to use yet. I'm thinking maybe a, a green or a gray. I, the bandsaw I painted black. Um, but I, I think I want to keep it more original to what the real the machine originally was colored, which I think was green, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure of that. Um, we've got a lot of exciting things in the works. I still have the Riftsaw and White Oak box, which will probably be the next episode. Um, and just a lot of cool projects coming up. I'm really excited to be bringing those to you guys. Uh, as always, I really appreciate y'all tuning in, and I'll see you next time.